Young's puts it in. Bullet Bowler takes it off the back and he crashes over. He caught them napping. Try to England. My dad came over in the 99 World Cup playing for Tonga. Um, I actually played against England at Twickenham. We were there watching. He got picked up by a team in Wales, Pony Pool. I was eight at the time. I love it, just being on the plane. Me and my brother, just, we wouldn't sleep the whole way. We'd just be watching movies. Then getting here, just getting to like new surroundings. Uh, it was a bit of an eye opener. It was quite cold. We came over, I think it was maybe like December 99, I think, or near enough anyway. My father's family have all played, uh, all coach. So his brothers, him and his brothers, all played for Tonga. My grandfather played, his father played for Tonga, so it's always there, been there and thereabouts. But in terms of me and my brother, I'd say it probably started getting a bit more intertwined when we moved over to the UK. When we were going to school and stuff, it was always, we were always taught that it was religion, so God first, then school, then rugby was always last. But it wasn't a case of my father trying to push us away from rugby, but he tried to make us realise that it was a tough uh, life and academics could be easier. But I found academics quite hard. Uh, my dad was pretty, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say strict. He's pretty um, hard on us, but from a good place. We realise that now. We joke about it now, but at the time it wasn't that fun. Um, we played one game that we were, we were pretty rubbish. I'd admit that and we were sat in the back of the car eating chips and curry, I think it was. I remember quite vividly just laughing away, joking around and obviously getting on my dad's nerves. And then he stops the car and makes us run home. Um, and all I remember from that was just was going, not very fast, but running, because I hated being in trouble. And I remember my, my brother was just crying because, I don't know, he's throwing a tantrum basically. Um, but I was too scared to stand up to my parents. Um, so I just ran and I just remember him crying. And that's something that I've always got a one up on him is that I never cried when we ran. The way we, we used to train when we were younger was when we wake up in the morning, he'd, before he left for uh, work or training, uh, he'd come in and just say, oh, I'll see you after school, we'll do some training. <laughs> so uh, all day for school, I'm dreading. It's all, always in the back of my head. No, no, we got training in the evening, so um, it wasn't a nice feeling. And then when you get home, you're thinking, oh, hopefully he's forgotten. But uh, now he, where we used to live in Wales, there's quite a few hills around us. And it just so happened that where we lived, there was a perfect like block to run around, where you go up one side, go across, back down, and come back to, where, to our house. So we used to do that all the time, and uh, it was tough, kind of, Trying to get through those days, and I guess it's all worth it now. I'm guessing it's like any other um, two brothers, close in age. Um, we obviously we were close, but we always we used to fight a lot. Um, I think that's what stressed my mum out the, the most. My dad obviously being away training and stuff quite a lot through the day. She was the one having to look after us and so she had a lot of the discipline was on my mum. We used to argue a lot and I think as you get older you start realising it's just a waste of energy. <laughs> so we even get to the point where we're fighting and then the second we hear our mum or dad, we're like, oh, <laughs> stop straight away. So we learned very quickly that um, we had to get on, and I'd say, yeah, I think it's made us who we are today, yeah. So I was really lucky that I always had Mako doing things bef before me so I can be like, oh, if my brother can do it, so, you know, like my head starts like thinking, I beat him last week, so why can't I do it? Um, so I'm very lucky to have my brother. Um, even when we first came into to camp, um, he told me what it was like, be prepared for this, and he never had that before him, so. I always had a head start over my brother because of having him. That's an awesome, not just the only part, but that's one of the awesome things of having like an older brother in camp. And also, um, you know, like when someone wants to tell me something and they're not comfortable, he'll, he'll always tell me. 
And I know it's, it's not him trying to get one up on me, it's him trying to help me. One of my cousins used to play NRL, uh, Jimmy Dimmock. Um, that's on my mum's side. Uh, he's actually a first cousin. <laughs> um, obviously my little cousin Manu's with us in, at Saracens. Uh, we've got other cousins who, who are coming up through systems, whether they be at Wasps or uh, ones to sign for Ealing Trail Finders. It's good that they have us in, in a way, me and my brother, because they can see that if we can do it, then they can do it as well. My cousins have uh, done a lot for the name, I guess, and it helps you. People see your, my surname and just be like, oh, he must be pretty good or something just because of those two. But I think it's just it's quite nice um, that they've, they've done the surname like proud, I guess, They're kind of um, taken a challenge from my past, like grandpa and uncles and kind of taken it to a different level. And I'm trying to follow in their footsteps and hopefully try to be good role models like them. So Manu and KP, who's another cousin of mine, both of them, they're core cousins and they are cousins, but in Tonga, um, everyone is pretty much, they kind of consider every Tonga related. It's, everyone knows everyone back on the island. Uh, so a fifth cousin is still quite a strong bond. For me, Manu's, even though he's my cousin, I've kind of grown up with him and been about around him a lot. So um, I, I'd say he's probably more of a little brother to me than he would be a cousin. Uh, so he's, for, for example, um, Toby Faletau, he's a distant relative, if that really, but we've kind of grown up together and him and his family, so we consider him more, more closer than what I think some British people would consider their cousins. To us as Tongans, um, we consider every Tongan family and then we, instead of trying to explain how you're related or how you know each other, you just call them a cousin. Kinatola keeps control, now picks and drives. Billy Vunapola scores a try on his England debut. Having rugby in our lives from an early age, uh, or having that love and affinity for the sport has kind of helped us want to be as good as we can be in it. It's not just the males in the family that love rugby, it's the females also. Um, obviously with us playing rugby, me and brother here, um, my family come and support me as much as they can, so. I think that's a massive thing in terms of helping you become the best you can be. Uh, you got to love what you do and I certainly love what I do. And You feel lucky to be in this position but also you, f you remember how you get here which is sacrifice your family make and all the support they show you for the years. Ever since I, I've known um, my family growing up as a kid all, all they've known is rugby and so when I was growing up like I would watched rugby with my granddad, didn't even understand it, just watched it and was like, oh yeah, this is cool. Um, and then, and in Tonga, basically rugby is kind of uh, everyone's hobby without you even knowing it. If you didn't know rugby, then um, it'd be like, oh, is he all right? Like, <laughs> so uh, not that it's, you know, like a bad thing not to like rugby, but it's so, um, ingrained in us back in Tonga um, and I guess that's why we are kind of made for it because we kind of grow up with it uh, subconsciously we think about it um, even now I guess I would, could say we just love it um, you know we don't just represent England um, and ourselves or our family we represent um, our upbringing as well